Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at an old G advanced math question. Some nice problems through those tests, so I thought we would do another one today. This one has a bit of trig in it. It's a single equation. What they're doing is they're giving us an equation that has a cosine and a sine in it. And it also has A, B, and C. And A, B, and C are all non-zero real numbers, okay? Um, the other thing that we know, we're told, is that there are two roots to this equation. So they tell us that alpha and beta are roots. And not only that, but they also tell us that the sum of alpha and beta is equal to pi over 3. So alpha plus beta is equal to pi over 3. And we also know that a, b, c are non-zero and real. And so the objective here is to figure out what the ratio is of B over A. <laughs> so there's the problem. Okay, so when I look at this question, um, a couple of things come to mind. As soon as they give you a single equation and they give you two roots or two solutions, they're kind of giving you a system. Do you see what I mean? Because if alpha is a root, if alpha is a solution to that, it balances it meaning I can plug it in, and that produces an equation. So in other words, um, root three times a cosine alpha plus two b sine alpha equals c. That's one equation. That automatically comes from the fact that alpha is a root. And since beta is a root, we can also write it like this. We can plug beta in because it balances the equation. So root 3a cosine beta plus 2b sine beta equals c and there's the second equation so in a way we're trying to solve a system trying to figure out what a and b would be in a sense okay so when we have a system of equations what are our methods we can use substitution we can use elimination addition uh, if we're going to use an elimination approach, um, because we want to write A in terms of B probably in the end, I'm going to suggest that we get rid of C. So if I want to get rid of C, what I could do is take the first equation and subtract the second from it. So when I do that, watch what happens. So I'm going to sort of stack these up. That's a like, these are like terms. So this minus this is going to be root 3 times A times cosine alpha minus cosine beta. Cosine alpha minus cosine beta. And here as well, this minus this, well that's plus 2b in brackets, sine alpha minus sine beta. And the brilliance here is it gets rid of the c. And that's okay because the question doesn't really care about c. It wants a and b. It wants B over A, it wants the ratio of the two. Okay, so once we get to here, we have this new equation, and um, what I'm noticing is I have one, two terms equals zero. And I kind of like to use this idea that A times B equals zero. That implies what? That either A is equal to zero, or B is equal to zero. So the way to go here would be to probably convert these subtraction trig identities to product trig identities because when you have things being multiplied together you can start pulling out common factors right so I do know that there is a sum to product conversion for cos alpha minus cos beta so it's going to be this root 3a I'm confident just to write this down and not derive it because usually these are issued on most big tests you know so cos alpha minus cos beta is actually equal to negative 2 sine alpha plus beta over 2 times the sine of alpha minus beta over 2. Okay, that's just a direct substitution. And similarly here, there's also a, a difference to product uh, substitution for sine alpha minus sine beta. So plus 2b, and in this case, I get just two. Uh, I'm gonna get a cosine alpha plus beta over two 
multiplied by the sine of alpha minus beta over 2 and that's all equal to 0. So it looks pretty ugly but this is actually pretty useful for at least a couple of reasons. Number one, look, we've now isolated alpha plus beta and we know that alpha plus beta is equal to pi over 3. So this here just becomes the sine of pi over 6. Pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 6. And the same here, we've identified alpha plus beta. We haven't done it with pi, uh, alpha minus beta, but that's okay because look, I have one, two terms, two big terms. They both have a sine alpha minus beta in it. That's a common factor, so I can pull it out. They also have a two in common. So I'm gonna take the two uh, multiplied by the sine of alpha minus beta over two. Do you see I've got it in both terms, alpha, minus beta over 2. There's going to be my common factor. Now I'll divide it out in the first term. So that's going to be a minus root 3a. And of course these are going to cancel, simply leaving this here, which is the sine. Now I'm going to convert it now, right? Because do you follow me here? Alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is equal to pi over 3. That's in the hypothesis. So that means alpha plus beta divided by 2 is going to be pi over 6. So pi divided by 6, and okay, and now I'm going to take it out of this term here. So plus, well I'm going to lose a 2 for the common factor, and I'm also going to lose the sine alpha minus beta over 2, leaving this. So plus, um, in this case I'm going to have a 2b cosine alpha plus beta over 2, close your bracket, equals zero. And just double check to make sure you didn't make a boo-boo. I lost a two here, so I leave a two. I've got my b, the cos alpha plus beta over two. Oh, by the way, that's also pi over six. I'm just gonna put a pi over six above it. And okay, this is good. Now, notice I have this times this equals zero. Okay, so think of this as your big A and this as your big B. So that means either this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. Well, I'm gonna put my attention on this part right here because that doesn't have an A or a B in it. So it's not gonna necessarily help me deduce the ratio of B over A. But this does, look, there's an A and there's a B. So I'm just gonna take this part here. Therefore, this has to be equal to zero because this times this is equal to zero so either this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. If this can be set equal to zero, that also implies that this is true. That 2b cosine pi over 6 is equivalent to root 3a sine pi over 6. Well, we have it. Look, because we the cosine of pi over 6 is easy to calculate. Um, in fact, if I were to divide through by cosine pi over 6, I just get a tan pi over 6 here. And I can divide that over to the other side. So that's going to be 2b over root 3a is equivalent to the tan of pi over 6. The tan of pi over 6, if you don't know it, it's 1 over root 3. But you can always use your special triangle 1, 2, root 3, pi over 6 is there. The tan of that is opposite over adjacent. That's 1 over root 3. How nice is that? Because look, the root 3's are going to cancel. That's simply going to mean that A is equal to 2B. We did it because look, if I want to know what B over A is, well, I'll leave B in the top where the A is. I'll write 2B. So that means that it's equal to 1 over 2. So the ratio of b to a is 1 over 2. And that's by simply using the hypothesis information, a couple of substitutions, and probably the most important thing is this is, this is simply a system. It's a system of equations. Usually in a system, they'll give you two equations and say solve. But another way would be to give you the solutions. Do you see? and a single equation with some other unknowns built into it, just to build up the question. All right, well, if you like that, slap a like on the video. Lots more videos to come. 
Uh, don't forget to subscribe. There's lots of new subscribers. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. It's really nice to see you leaving comments and I'll see you in the next video.